"'Twas on the shores that round our coast, from Deal to Ramsgate span, that I found alone, on a piece of stone, an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he. And I heard this wight, on the shore of sight, in a singular minor key, Oh, I am a cook and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy Brig, and a boatswain tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. And he shook his fists, and he tore his hair, till I really felt afraid, for I couldn't help thinking the man had been drinking, and so I simply said, Oh, elderly man, tis little I know of the duties of men of the sea, but leap my hand if I understand how you could possibly be at once a cook and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy Brig, and a boatswain tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. Then he gave a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen larn, and having got rid of a thumping quid, he spun this painful yarn. "'Twas in the good ship Nancy Bell that we sailed to the Indian Sea, and there on a reef we come to grief, which has often occurred to me. And pretty night all of the crew was drowned. There were seventy-seven us all, and only ten of the Nancy's men said, "'Here to the muster roll. There was me and the cook and the captain bold and the mate of the Nancy brig and the boatswain tight and a midship might and the crew of the captain's gig. For a month we'd neither whistles nor drink till hungry we did feel. So we drawed a lot and according shot the captain for our meal. The next lot fell to the Nancy's mate and a delicate dish he made. Then our appetite with the midship might we seven survivors stayed. And then we murdered the bosun tight, and he much resembled pig. Then we whittled free, did the cook and me, on the crew of the captain's gig. Then only the cook and me was left. And the delicate question, which of us two goes to the kettle arose? Oh, we all get it out of sitch. For I loved that cook as a brother I did, and the cook he worshipped me. But we'd both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other chap's hold, you see. I'll be eat if you dines off me, says Tom. Yes, that, says I, you'll be. I'm boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I. And exactly so, quoth he. Says he, dear James, to murder me were a foolish thing to do. For don't you see that you can't cook me? while well, I can and will cook you. So he boils the water and takes the salt and the pepper in portions true, which he never forgot, and some chopped shallot, and some sage and parsley too. Come here, says he, with a proper pride, which his smiling features tell. Twill soothing be if I let you see how extremely nice you'll smell. And he stirred it round and round and round, and he sniffed at the foaming froth, when I apps with his heels and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. And I eat that cook in a week or less. And as I eating be, the last of his chops, why, I almost drops, for a wessel in sight I see. And I never grin, and I never smile, and I never laugh nor play. But I sit and croak, and a single joke I have, which is to say, oh, I am a cook, and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy Brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig.